Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Coffee Corner. Today's topic is inspired by a book,、uh, "The Subtle Art of Not Giving a f- and my students' question: How to improve speaking, which is funny, right? So we're talking about fault and responsibility. I'm never a big fan of self-help books. I think most of them are like full of fluff. Right, so they're not trying to really. I mean, they're trying to tell you something without telling you anything. That's why I'm not a big fan. But this book is really good, like really good, and it is my first time actually listen to a book, which is audio book, of course. Uh, I figure out the benefits of listening to a book because then when I walk Bob and I have ton, a ton of time to listen to a book, and thanks to Bob, I really I fell in love with audio books. Shout out to Bob. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about responsibility and a fault. So why did I say I got inspired by my student's question about how to improve English or how to improve speaking? When she asked me the question, I asked her a question as well. I say,、uh, "Do you speak English after class?" So she laughed. Okay, and I asked her, "How many hours do you put or do you spend on speaking, or improve speaking, or practice your speaking?" And then she said, "Only during a class." And then I told her, I asked her, "Do you know how many hours I spend on improving my speaking?"、Um, I said, "Pretty much every single minute." Even I, even in my dream, I speak English. <laughs>、uh, not really true, but、uh, what I was trying to say, or the point I was trying to make there, is if you don't, if you are not willing to put effort there, and you are not going to get the result you want. But then she said, "Oh, okay, Bay. But it is not my fault. It is my parents, my my、uh, friends, my family's fault because they didn't speak English with them with with me, and they I feel awkward speaking English with them." Because we're all speaking the same language, so why do I? There's no need to speak English with them. And I said the only time I will speak English is going to Walmart, going to grocery stores, and other places that I have to speak English. And that's how much time I spend on it. And I was like, well, you know what? It is their fault not to encourage you to speak more, but it is not their fault to let you. Not improve your English. You know why? Because it is your responsibility to say yes. I need to improve and take actions. But you decided to say no. I blame them for not letting me speak English with them. And that's what I want to say. And that is what I read or what I listened、uh, from this book. And it says it's、uh, responsibility fault fallacy. People tend to、uh, blur the line between fault and responsibility. They always think it's their fault, or it's someone's fault、uh, that I didn't succeed, or it's their fault that I didn't do this. It's their fault I didn't have a promotion, I didn't have a raise, or it's their fault I didn't get what I want. But they ignored the responsibility part because it's not their responsibility for your success. It's not their responsibility for your achievement. It is your responsibility to take actions, react to their fault. I mean, of course, it is their fault that made you feel this way. But how would you react to it? That is up to you. And that's what I wanted to say here. And that reminded me another concept, which is、uh, family of origin issues. So I've struggled a lot with it. I mean, I am learning still, but. Especially in the past, I really, I really struggled with it. My parents' generation, let's say, there, there were not many resources to teach them how to be good parents, and of course, everything they did was more like experiment and see if that would work on my kid. Right, and they focused on more,、uh, they focused more on material、uh, than spirit. So it was hard for me to understand why they did that to me. And a lot of things. Let's say I'm not confident, and uh, uh, I always criticize myself, and I'm so afraid of making mistakes. I'm always worried that I'm not good enough. Those kind of things are formed through my childhood and then till into my adulthood. So I am still like that. I'm still trying to overcome those negative. Uh, negativity, but there was a long time actually, a while I was blaming them for everything. I think w- how 
I'm really weird. I have this weird personality. I'm really introverted. That's because you. It was your fault. It was how you、uh, raised me、uh, as a child. And then now I become this weirdo. I could never achieve what I wanted. I could never step forward just because how you raised me. So how many of you? I mean, maybe not many of you. Sorry. Let's let let me put this way.、Uh, if you ever had that experience, do you think it was your parents' fault、uh, that leads you what you are and where you are at now?、Uh, let me know. If you don't have that kind of or. Let's say you're a happy person, and then you have a good personality because your parents are open-minded,、uh, democratic, or they're always like open to you, and you guys talk about a lot of feelings, and that's why you have a good personality. So either way, you think there's a major reason that you are what you are right now because your parents, your family. Let me know. For a while, I thought so. Really, for a while, I thought so, and I was trying to. Cope with it. I was trying to overcome it, and just sometimes I felt like, you know, I just couldn't until I read this part. I mean, oh, I realized that it is what it is, but I never thought about it is their fault, but it is not their responsibility to make me grow, ah,、uh, better, grow, ah,、uh, go further. It is my responsibility to work really hard to try to get away from them and become the person I want to be. But that. Process is painful, and if you decide to take responsibility, it means you're gonna have to bear pain too. But human nature, right? So they always it, you you will automatically、uh, try your best to avoid the pain, the harm, because it's just really uncomfortable. Who wants to embrace that? Your first reaction is always to avoid it. But then the easiest way to avoid the responsibility or to avoid the pain is to just. Put the blame on someone else, which in this case is your family, which in this case is my family. So I always want to do it. So here is the definition of family of origin issues. So let me read this out.、Uh, one one's family of origin, the family one grew up in, as opposed to the people one currently lives with, is the place that people typically learn to become who they are. From the family of origin, a person learns how to communicate. Process emotions and get needs met. People also learn many of their values and benefit beliefs from their families. Basically, I forgot. Like I read in a student essay about this, that how you, what you are, is formed through your family because they're first people or they're first group of people you you met since you were born, and they they taught you how to react to cer- certain things. They taught you how to identify right or wrong, black and white, those kind of things. And then through the process of growing up, and then your values and beliefs are formed through them. And whatever they show to you, or whatever they present to you, is how you get to know the world and how you react to the world. Right. And then you don't know how to express your. Uh, emotions, and let's say you don't know how to get mad, you don't know how to say "I love you,"、uh, you just don't know how to deal with the relationships, and then your first reaction is to blame your parents because that's how they taught you. Sure, and communication, right? So some people are good at communicating in a very nice way,、uh, and some people just don't know how because you say, "Oh, I learned from my parents when they communicate, they just yell at each other." And then that's how you learn, and then you bring that into your new relationship, and that's how you communicate with your partner, with your friends, because that's how you grow up. But everyone will say, "Well, I am what I am right now because my family." And then you're trying to blame everything on family of origin issues. But what kind of role are you playing in the whole process of growing up? There must be something you need to do. You and there must be something that you have chosen to do, and then here is the result you have, and that comes to a responsibility. So everyone, especially if you're in a grown up and you have to take your own responsibility for everything, basically.、Uh, but also, if you're not adult yet,、uh, I'm not. I'm not sure how many of you are not adults yet.、Uh, you will really blame everything on your parents and say, "Well." I didn't have a right, or I didn't have a chance 
to choose things because、uh, it's all up to my parents. Sure.、Uh, have you tried it yet, or you just you just said that? So your responsibility in this situation is to give up. So that is your first reaction to their fault. You say, "I gave up because that's what they want me to be, and whatever major they chose for me, I'm just gonna go for it. It doesn't matter if I like it or not." Well, my parents like it, so I would do with that. And then I feel miserable. And then later on, you will complain that oh, it was all my parents' fault. What have you done? So the reason that people decide to put blame on someone else or something else instead of taking responsibility is just because taking your own responsibility takes so much effort, time, energy. And you have to try so hard to get away from your family, get away from the influence from your family, and then figure out your own way to grow up and a nice person. But that's painful, and that takes too much effort, and you don't want to do it. People have the tendency to feel comfortable, to feel feel nice. If it's painful, why am I why am I doing that? Of course not, right? So I'm not silly. I'm not dumb,、uh, but. If you choose to just take it, if you choose to say, "Yeah, sure, whatever my parents or whatever my family want me to do, I'll take it," then you should not complain that you didn't do something that you wanted to do、uh, because your parents. You had a chance to fight back, but you decided to give up because you believe you're a good daughter, and then you want to stay to the image, your your belief, your value of yourself. You say I want to be a good daughter, so I'm not gonna not listen to them. Then, then, then the price you pay for it is you have to give up what you like. That's what I was thinking about myself while listening to this book. And if you still remember, if you follow me for a while, and you know that I was really complaining a lot about my previous job, how students send me emails, messages,、uh, through the day, twenty four seven, nonstop, and I. I just I was really stressed, and I was so stressed because they didn't they didn't follow what I want them to follow, and it was and I was trying to think it was their fault to do that because I've already told you that I do not、uh, take messages, I do not respond messages、uh, after four, but you still did it, and I was so frustrated about it, and then to the point that I had to rant it out and to everybody here. Now I was thinking about what I did there. It was my choice. Of course, I explain everything that my office hours and please do this during office hours.、Uh, and if you send messages after that, I'm not going to respond to it. Things like that. I explain everything, but then I realized that I still check the messages, and it was my reaction. It was my choice, right? I wanted to check my phone. I wanted to click on the red dot and see what they said to me. I can't blame them. I mean, it was their fault that they sent those messages after I explained everything. But it was my responsibility to not to look at them. If I did not look at them, then I wouldn't feel stressed, and then I would just move on. And maybe I will still work there. I don't know. At that moment, it was my choice to look at those messages. I decided to look at those messages, and then I turned to be really mad about my behaviors. Then I start to blaming my parents to give me this kind of personality, and then I get frustrated. And then every time when I talk to my parents, I just feel so furious and angry that how, why did you raise me in that way? Now I always become miserable. So I blamed everybody for, ah,、uh, for what I have. That is me not taking responsibility, and I hate it. Until I read this, and I realized it is their fault, especially after I explain everything, and they still decide to do it. It was it was their choice to decide to do it, but I can't control their choices. I can only control myself. So, if that is legal, I mean it is of course legal. You're not supposed to work after your office hours,、uh, and you don't get paid for that. And you can definitely make a complaint about it, but. Then why why do I still why did I still look at those messages? Oh, because of my because of force of habit. I have the habit if I see the red notification there and I want to click on that when I see the message and then I want to do it. I can't just see the message and leave it there. And that is not my personality. 
Oh right, my personality. I hate my personality. Ah,、uh, why do you hate my per? Why do I hate my personality? My parents. They always taught me、uh, to do things right away, and、uh, now I had this miserable personality that made me really unhappy. That is a miserable circle. You're blaming everyone but yourself. Well, you, I played an important role there too, but I didn't say that because admitting that I was part of what I've been through is painful, and I don't want to feel that. And it is my human nature to avoid it. So that is how I feel about responsibly and a fault. Here, I want to finish this video with the two quotes. I really, really love it, and I'm gonna just read it out.、Uh, first one, how he defined fault and responsibility. So he says here. Fault is past tense. Responsibility is present tense. Fault results from choices that have already been made.、Uh, responsibility results from the choices you are currently making every second of every day. You are choosing to read this. You are choosing to think about the concepts. You are choosing to accept and reject the concepts. It may be my fault that you think my ideas are lame, but you are considered you are responsible for coming to your own conclusions. I love it. I really love it. I don't know if you have seen this on any kind of social media. It says if you don't like it, you just click on the button and then just go. Right? Why do you have to leave a comment there and say, "Wow, you should make changes. You should add subtitles. You should not do this everything in English because I don't understand you."、Mm, that is the conclusion you come up with, and it has nothing to do with me because my responsibility is. Just my responsibility. I'm responsible for everything I decide to do, and that is my concept. It might be lame. It might not be a good idea, right? And I've received a lot of suggestions that if you have subtitles, you will have more followers. Probably, I'm taking my responsibility. I said this is my concept, and I explain I'm very lazy and can't do that. So I can't blame you guys not acknowledging my talent here, not acknowledging how talented I am here. Uh, well, you know, it's not your responsibility to see that.、Uh, I didn't do a good job to de- deliver the image, but then how can I blame you guys for not seeing it? So I really like it. I really thought about、uh, that a lot, and I was like, okay, that's a good quote to read here.、Uh, so the second quote I have here、uh, is really funny. I I really like it too. There is a difference between blaming someone else for your situation and that person's actual being responsible for your situation. Nobody else is ever responsible for your situation but you. Many people may be blamed for your unhappiness,、uh, not no, but nobody is ever responsible for your unhappiness but you. This is because you always get to choose how you see things, how you react to things, how you value things. You always get to choose the metric. By which to measure your experiences. I love it, and it's very simple to understand. Like you're unhappy about certain things,、uh, but nobody is responsible for your unhappiness. It might be their fault to make you feel miserable, but you have a right to choose to get out of there and get rid of them. So, for example, you're not happy about your work now, your job right now, because you have a really toxic work environment, because you have. Really terrible coworkers, and you have a really mean boss. It is their fault, and they cost everything there, and they make whole work environment so toxic, so miserable. But it also your responsibility to take an initiative. That you want to change it, you want to just take it, or you want to quit. You have to take your responsibility to make yourself happy because. They're too busy to care about your emotions and feelings, right? And they can't do that. But then you think, oh, it's not fair because, wow,、well, they made everything. They should make up for it. You know what? We're dots. Nobody is responsible for anyone's life, especially when it comes to happiness. And you have to make moves. And that making move is very difficult and painful. It takes a lot of guts and effort and time and energy, even sometimes money, to to get what you want. Are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to experience the pain and take it and embrace it? And that is your choice, and that is your responsibility. If you think avoiding your responsibility and is very difficult, and then your your first reaction is, of course, to blame someone, it is also your choice to do it. Then you can't say, "Well, you know, 
someone someone is really treating me like garbage, and then stop hanging out with that person. Okay, so that is just my point, and I am really learning from this book, and I think it's really awesome. Back to our speaking or English topic here. If you really decide to improve your English, let's say you want to improve your listening, how many hours you put there to improve your listening? How did you do it? Did you find an effective way? Did someone or you're thinking someone stop you from improving your listening? It's the whole environment. Oh, I'm not in another country. I'm not in an English speaking country. I have no、uh, partners to practice with, so that's why my listening sucks. Or thinking about your speaking, you want to improve your speaking. Have you ever opened your mouth and speak? Have you ever talked about any topics? Have you ever go find some interesting topic and started to comment on them? Well, it is too difficult, and I'm so shy. I can't really do it. And you know, everybody is criticizing me. Well, it is your, it is their fault to criticize you. It is their fault to make you feel discouraged. But it is your responsibility to take a first step and say, "Fuck it, I want to do it." But that is my point, and the whole concept is called the responsibility slash fault fallacy. It's a false logic, and that's it. Okay, so I hope you like this video. I mean, I've been too talkative and、uh, totally not logical at all. But I hope you still like it. If you don't like it, that is okay. I can't control you. <laughs> And but I I can control what I want to talk about. So I like this video and please give me thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.